Very excited to have our first storyteller here. I've known him for like 13 years. He is a phenomenal storyteller. He works for The Moth, and you may have seen him at the New York International Fringe Festival. Please welcome Larry Rosen. Hello. 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 Okay. At the age of 25, while living in San Diego, I took a job with a live wires singing telegram company. Uh. And so when I was hired, these nice people at live wires told me that there are three types of telegrams that were available to an employee. The first was your basic messenger telegram. Okay, this you wear, wear the classic messenger uniform, you know, with a little pillbox hat and a little jacket. You wear tap shoes. You show up at the recipient's doorstep with a bunch of balloons, do a little song and dance, and get paid for it. And I said, great. Sign me up. And they said, next is the specialty grams. So it was like superheroes and comic book characters and holiday theme characters like Cupid or Easter Bunny. And these paid a little more. And I said, great, I'm in. And they said, on top of the line is the stripogram. <laughs> and I said, oh. And they said, yeah, it starts out like the basic messenger gram, except that after the song and dance, the the storyteller, the um, messenger, takes off the uniform down to a Speedo bikini bathing suit. And I said, oh, no thanks. <laughs> and they were very quick to assure me that their strips were not played for any kind of sexual character, that they were really played for the humor. They said, our, our strippers play a kazoo while they strip. <laughs> and I said, oh, well, a kazoo. <laughs> no. I was not going to take my clothes off in public. I didn't tell them why, but I'll tell you. So growing up, I was classified a fat kid. Fat enough to feel very different from most other kids my age. Fat enough to be teased mercilessly by a lot of kids my age. Fat enough to be included by my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Zabraskis, in uh, a little group of kids that she felt could stand to lose a few pounds. And so periodically she would take us down to the nurse's office and she would weigh us. And then she would come back and report on our progress to the rest of the class. <laughs> totally. I'm not kidding. She called this little group the thin people. This was supposed to somehow inspire us. Remember she had this notebook where she had like the thin people. It was like reading these long letters. On the front they used to cringe every time I saw the cover, or every time she said the name. Because I knew I was not a thin people, I was a fat people. And I felt stuck in that. So by the time I was 25, I'd long since lost the weight, but they say if the trial is bad enough, that psychologically, like, in your mind, you never lose the weight. And so in my mind, I was still a fat people. I didn't tell any of this to the live wires people. I said I was just not interested in stripograms, which they were fine with until one Thursday afternoon when they call me in a panic and they say, Greg, who was one of the messengers was supposed to do a stripogram at a birthday party at the Harbor House the next night, he had to cancel, no one else was available, would I please consider doing this? And I said, well, isn't the Harbor House like a major club scene on a Friday? And they said, yeah, but that actually works in your, to your advantage. They said, because the place would be so crowded and so noisy that most people won't even know you're there. You just find the birthday girl's table, you do your thing, you're gone. And uh, I thought about it, and the only thing just about that can make me overcome just about any fear is the chance to be a hero. <laughs> and so I said, OK. And so they were incredibly grateful. And so the next day I go out and I buy a Speedo bikini, and I go home and I'm practicing some moves in front of the mirror, and it's just torturous. And I finally just say, OK. I'm going for it. So I put the uniform on. I don't put a shirt on under the jacket because I'm prepared for this and such. And I get to the Harbor House, and it's packed, just as they said. And the way the Harbor House was situated is there was this big dance floor, very brightly lit. And then there were dinner tables on either side and in the front. And the farther away you got from the dance floor, the darker it got. And I was thrilled to find that the birthday girl's table was way in the back where it was darkest. 
so I go in and I find their table and I'm coming in with the balloons and her friends are all like giggling and they're slapping her and stuff. Like and I come in and I go in and I try to you know, do the little song and dance and I'm trying to tap dance on the carpet and I'm, it's like really loud and like shouting the song like this and I'm like the music's blaring and then the DJ's doing this whatever, whatever, whatever thing and I'm like fighting all of this going through the song and then all of a sudden it gets very quiet and I hear the DJ say, wait a minute, is that a singing telegram? Oh, yeah. And I go, the girls are all going, yes, 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 like this. And he goes, well, don't hide there in the back. Come out here on the dance floor and do it. He goes, come on, folks, get off the floor. Give the guys some room. And so they clear the floor. And then they create an aisle between me and the floor. So there is nothing to do but to walk through the crowd, onto the floor, turn around, and face the entire crowd, which is now silent and looking at me. So, put on a big smile, and I said, well, folks, it's Kathleen's birthday. <laughs> and I say, Kathleen, this is for you, and I do the little song and dance, and, and I can see people are being polite, but they really want to get back to partying. And so I finish, and then I think, what's the worst that could happen if I just leave now? I thought, OK, they'll complain. They won't have to pay. I might lose my job. It might be worth it. But I take a deep breath, and I reach into my pocket, and I take out the kazoo. <laughs> And I start to play like my version of raunchy music. It's like I'm going like this. And I just start to unzip the jacket really slowly. As I said, I had no shirt on. And I start to slip it over my shoulders. And the crowd goes ape shit. <laughs> They're cheering and screaming, and so I let the jacket fall to the floor, and I start to do it under the pants, and now they're going crazy. And so I'm doing the and I'm like clapping along like this, and, I said, and it's like, so I, I get really get into it now, and I start to, and I yank off the pants. <laughs> I yank off the pants, I pull them off over the tap shoes, and I don't know where I learned these moves, but I'm like, I'm swinging them over my head. I'm slapping them on the floor. I'm pulling them between my legs. I throw them into the crowd. I kick off the shoes. They're all still cheering. I yank off the socks. I dangle them in front of the crowd, throw them into the crowd. And I finish in this triumphant pose, just me and my Speedo, to tumultuous applause. And I'm thinking while they're screaming and clapping, I have never felt so approved of in my life. And I hold that for a couple of seconds and it is incredible. And I run out and I grab all my stuff and they're still cheering and I think, hell, I'll get your dress in the car. And I carry all my stuff out and people are high-fiving me and they're slapping me on the back and it's like, it's the most wonderful thing. And I say, good night, good night. And it's like, I'm the star and I run out to the car and I have a panic attack, seriously. It was not a rational panic attack, but something in me just said, I never should have done that. And something horrible is gonna happen. And I'm freaking out. So I throw the stuff in the car. I don't even put the clothes back on. I'm just in the Speedo. And I start to drive. And I, I head out and I'm driving up the freeway and I lower the windows so I can breathe. And the San Diego night air starts to blow across my skin. And I start to relax. And then I start to think about what just happened and how incredible that felt. And I felt incredibly excited. And I thought to myself, screw you, Mrs. Obraskas. I'm a sexy people. Thank you. Comes the word 